house lights. Quite literally, it's a house light. <laughs> Joke. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody, to Approach the Nerd, where we put your TV shows, movies, video games, pretty much any of your nerdums on trial. I'm Jam, and today, I actually don't know what we're reviewing. Of course I do. It's, it's, it's Harry Potter. I mean, look, look at what I'm wearing. So... I have some questions. We're going to be going over mostly the cinematic universe of Harry Potter and not touching on the books because that's that's a whole nother set of videos. So let's start this thing. I don't know why I whispered that. Why? Why did I do that? I don't know. Because I can talk like a snake. Did you like that? All right. Let's get to it. So my first question is more so on the kind of medical things going on in the Harry Potter universe. So in a few of the things going on, they have spells, they have potions, they have all these healing capabilities. We've seen Harry's arm get, you know, magically fixed, broken bones and everything. We see Hermione fix his glasses, but you know what? We've never seen anyone fix their eyes. Why is that? Like, you can, you can do all this magical stuff, but you still nearsighted? Like, it doesn't make any sense. Like, you can essentially have everlasting life. You could be immortal with the horcruxes. But for some reason, people just choose, I guess, to wear glasses. Doesn't that get in the way of the spells? Don't your glasses fog up every now and again? And you know what? What else are they not curing or doing? Like how expensive is their medical magic? It's never really explained. I know if I was a wizard and my glasses kept getting broken, I don't want no Oculus Reparo. Uh, you better fix my eyes. But nobody ever does that. So whatever. That's, that's, that's the thing. That's a, that's a minor, minor thing. But I just think it's weird that wizards would choose to be nearsighted and farsighted. You have to be able to see what you're doing. There's lots of chases and death eaters going on and, you know, all kinds of magical crazy stuff. But needing to see, yeah, whatever. Broke my arm, cure that, fix that. Oh, let me just, let me just pop this potion real quick. And I don't have scurvy anymore. Magic. In the Deathly Hollows part one, there's a scene where everybody's turned into Harry. They've taken Polyjuice Potion, they've turned into Harry so you know you can throw off the Death Eaters and you know Hagrid gets to Harry to his destination. Fine, whatever. It's, we're, we're doing that. But they're driving through like tunnels and cars are flipping over on the streets and and like magic is going on and all kinds of craziness. People are seeing that. The mogul world is seeing that. There's it's never explained if the ministry or anybody goes back and obliviates their minds. Like, do they at what point do they erase their minds? You know, there is some sucker out there who's like walking around to scare to death and they think he's crazy because he sees all these wizards, you know, going around. He doesn't even know that they're wizards. They could be monsters. They could be demons. They look just like you and me, but who knows what's going on? We've seen the Obliviate spell being used in Fantastic Beasts on a much broader scale, but in the actual like Deathly Hollows part one, it's, it's never explained. Even afterwards, like after the movies ended, everybody's like going on the train. Oh, look at our kids. Oh, yeah, everything's fantastic. Does the muggle world know? Have they seen this? And if they have, 
somebody should probably say something or do something about that because that's a problem. I thought the whole thing about keeping the world separate was that you guys are separate from the muggles. But I don't know what I'm talking about though. So my third question for JK Rowling, or maybe just in general, Peter Pettigrew, Ron's rat, been in the family for years. So in The Prisoner of Azkaban, when the twins, Fred and George, give Harry the Marauder's map, and it's supposed to tell where everyone is at any point in time, and you see the little footprints just walking around with their names on it. Has it never occurred to the twins that there is this mystery man named Peter Pettigrew that's constantly with Ron? Like, he may be sleeping with them. It's like, oh, look at Ron, you know, with Peter Pettigrew again. It doesn't make any sense. That's never addressed. Did they just skip over it? Do they not care where Ron is at any given point in time? Who knows? But it's a little suspicious that they've had this map where they can see everyone and it doesn't hide your identity because it tells you exactly who you are and where you are at all times. But for some reason, they're just now discovering in the prisoner of Escobar that, huh, this little rat was a people the whole time. That just seems strange to me. I have my questions and I need answers. How is that possible? Okay, so I like the movies. I've read all the books, seen all the movies, of course. But there is one particular thing that I think they could have changed in the movie. There was no chemistry between Jenny and Harry in the movie. Like, I don't know what was going on with Bonnie and Daniel, but for some reason, there was not that build up of that romantic like tension or that romantic ness. Romanticness is a word. No, it's not. I made it up, but it still stands. There is just, I would have rather they put Harry and Hermione together. Emma and Daniel had really good chemistry on set. However, Rupert Grit and Emma Watson did not. It was just like seeing two cousins just kind of love on each other and get jealous of each other. How awkward was that? And I think JK Rowling also agrees with me because if I'm not mistaken, she said the same thing herself, that Harry and Hermione should have been together. It's a minor thing. I'm not saying that Bonnie who played Jenny was like a boring character, but I mean, come on, there was like nothing there. Harry had no kind of like interesting suitors whatsoever. Even Cho was boring as F, but that's just me though. <sighs> so that's my top questions for the Harry Potter series. I mean, great movies. Fantastic. I've been loving reading and watching them since I could love and read and watch and especially love. So everyone, if you have anything, any kind of burning questions or any inconsistencies that you might have seen in the movies or the books or something that you didn't quite get or didn't quite understand or you got some questions that you need answer, just put them in the comments below because let's be honest, everything's not perfect in the Harry Potter world. Make sure you like, subscribe, click that bell notification so you can ring, 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 ring whenever we make new videos. Thank you for watching Approach the Nerd and can't wait to see what else we have on trial. Thank you for watching my video. I really appreciate it, but hey, the party doesn't have to stop now. Click on one of these videos and keep it going.